Welcome to Turning Red that is about periods. Kinda, not really, but eh, eh, eh. Not too sure, and the main character of this movie is one of the most annoying characters in Overwatch, Mei, a Chinese-Canadian overachieving 8th grader that is a slave to her parents, well, specifically her mom. That's kind of a cuck. She goes to school, we see her friend group, we got Tomboy, Crackhead, and Death, and on their way home, they crush over Devin, a fucking bucket hat retard in a 7-Eleven, then they crush over Four Town, their version of One Direction, which is confusingly made up of five people, beg her to stay and hang, but she's like, sorry, gotta attend to my womanly duties. But Mei, you clean every day, and that, guys, is how you lose your entire female audience in the first 60 seconds of a video. They do a stupid dance and she gets on a tram that she's late for. Very nice of the guy to wait for her. Wouldn't make sense though. It is fucking Kanada, eh? Anyway, she gets back home to her mom, which is the typical overbearing Asian mom, like, my daughter must get good results on test. Help clean, run the family business, be good at math and all that stuff, you know. Then they sit down their temple and light up for their ancestors who are like their gods in a way. Actually, the pandas are the... No? Okay, let me get this. So, they think their ancestors are pretty dope and their ancestors thought that red pandas are pretty dope and red pandas were like, oh, six, bro. And they bless them with some shit. Something along those lines, all right? Understand though? And after a long, hard day of running their tourist business, they watch TV. What? Four town if there are five of them. That's what I say. See, she gets it. Mom then insults her friends, then the bitch goes to do her homework and... This dense motherfucker. You know that the trash can has holes in it, right? That's just probably all over the floor, you dumb bitch. Anyway, Prepubis and her starts feeling the horny for 7-Eleven Devin and draws fanfic hentai of him in her notebook under her bed that her mom finds out because she can't act cool about it to save her life. And mom's like, what the hell is this? Is this 7-Eleven Devin? Does he do this shit to you? Oh, I'm about to whoop his ass. And she goes right on over there to fucking confront 7-Eleven Devin without even consulting her daughter for anything like any good parent would do. What a fucking jackass. And she embarrasses her poor child in front of the surprisingly packed supermarket and then kid goes home and going nuts due to shame in her room and while she sleeps in the night she gets a weird dream and wakes up as a red panda freaks out mama's concerned and figures out through female code that her kid is ketchup packeting for the first time she bursts in the bathroom with the appropriate supplies they don't lock the fucking bathroom door it doesn't look like they have a lock on it who the fuck doesn't have a lock on their fucking bathroom door whatever she doesn't actually see the kid as a panda because some food catches fire so may rushes back into her room and finds out that she can turn back into human by calming herself down and remaining zen and she goes to school trying to remain in the state of stoicism and unbotheredness but bitches be testing her with the 7-Eleven Devon story and she goes bare in the classroom when she finds out that her mom has been stalking her and kicks Punjabi the security guard to run over and give her period gear in front of her entire class instead of just asking the principal or something like that to pull the kid out of class and give him the pads like any other non-dipshit parent. Anywho, she gets embarrassed. Ha, I'm smart. And her mom spots her in the storm and so do many other people when she does her destructive escape from school back home. And once she gets there, her mom catches up and her dad's like, it's happened already? And she's like, what did you say? And they explain to her that all the women in her family get the power to turn into a red panda once they come of age using their few wings. And she gets mad at that thinking her life is over and whatnot, but it's cool because they can turn it off, right? By doing a ritual where they trap the soul of the red panda in a pendant on the night of a red moon, okay? And the only reason she didn't tell her this before is because she thought she'd had more time, she'd see the signs, blah blah blah, retarded excuses, but what annoys me the most is that she just assumed that they were on the same page with being a big red monster when she said I'm a big red monster in the bathroom, when literally one question would have avoided a whole lot of bullshit and given a lot of fucking clarity like hey daughter is this period with panda or just panda or maybe just period i don't know how this shit works might not be a package deal you feel me anyway assumption is the mother of all fuck ups mom's a stupid shit lawyer. moving on mom says she only gets one shot at the ceremony and the more the panda comes out the harder it will be for it to get trapped in the pendant and for the time being till the next red moon she shall stay in an empty room to avoid more morphing accidents then in her room she's surprised by her friends who find out about her period for sonam and comfort her back into a human so well that she now can control her super period power and they all tell her that they want to go see a jonas mother concert because four town is in town or that it is coming to town and after her parents test her emotions to see if she would react using various objects that trigger her emotions and stuff including the final obstacle which is a box of kittens i cannot believe they just have that on tap like that but whatever she then makes the pitch to her parents to go see four town now that she can control her panda but mom say no and dad can't say anything because he's a beta or he just can't be asked honestly then grandma calls because she saw me on the news and is coming to help and mother do not like that because she is worse than her apparently and at school may throws in a ball hard enough to be illegal in dodgeball how the fuck is that even there is no such thing bitch Fucking stupid coach. It doesn't matter because I need to pee, so I'm gonna let someone else take it over for now. All right, take it over, mini movies. Oh, this is the perfect segment to bring me in. Playing with balls, my specialty. The coach instructs his students to be like water. Isn't me Chinese? That's kind of racist. We turn to the girls whining about not being allowed to go to the Four Town concert. Then Abby shows off her ball handling skills. Even brings her mouth into play. Impressive. Where that don't sound right. Suddenly, May's mom pulls up her spy sash, but then dangerously skirts out of there further reinforcing the stereotype that Asian women are bad drivers. This infuriates Mei, causing her to nearly murder this child in cold blood with her panda powers. Okay, he was teasing her about her mom so he had it coming. Mei runs off to chill and her friends follow. Girls never go to the bathroom alone. 
She's devastated that her mom doesn't trust her to go to the concert even after fulfilling her duties as the stereotypical straight-A Asian student. Then, May hatches a plot. They could just raise money to buy their own tickets, but how? Suddenly, Abby inexplicably craves the warm embrace of May's panda form. Understandable. She hops on and May enters her imagination. What the? Different strokes for different folks, I guess. May pandas out, which is almost as cool as Morbin out. The door opens. Uh-oh. The cat, or should I say panda, is out of the bag. But it's all good. The girls are enamored by the panda form and are even willing to pay for it. And so begins the grind. May and her gang go full influencer mode. Relatable. Establishing a panda brand full of dripped out merchandise. Every day, May returns home with her parents none the wiser and hides her goodies underneath the bed. The next day at recess, the girls are tired of all this child labor, which is a certified bing chilling moment. Too far, May rages out and unlocks a new form. Anime girl mode, complete with tail and ears. Suddenly, a sussy boy from underneath the bleachers threatens May. He's gonna tell her mom that she's been flaunting her panda, which if this wasn't a kid's movie, I would think is something else. Anyway, he wants her to perform at his birthday party, calling it a favor. I call it blackmail. May reluctantly agrees because the cash is good. I respect the grad set. Back at home, May pretends to leave for mathletes, to which her mom excitedly wishes to join. Also, she can dislocate her arm at will. Weird flex, but okay. On the way out, the pair are ambushed by May's grandma and a bunch of other smelly old ladies. They call May fat before lecturing her about her powers. Meanwhile, the party has begun and everyone is bored. Someone forgot the weed. May bails on her fam and prepares to hop out the window, but then her grandma barges in and confronts May about her pubic hair. Feeling guilty about her power overuse, May arrives at the party donning a fake bear outfit. Lame. Try as she might, peer pressure eventually overcomes her and she bears out. The kids ride May all night long. Wholesome. Afterwards, May and her friends celebrate before checking up on the Four Town concert. Four Town? Huh, more like four clowns. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh-oh, turns out the concert is actually on the 25th, which is the same date as May's ritual. She starts wilding out, then the birthday boy demands more rides. Things get heated when he calls May's mom a psycho and says her temple is goofy as hell. In retaliation, May jumps down and maims the poor guy, permanently disabling him. Just kidding, I'm sure he's fine. Meanwhile, May's mom checks up on May and, uh, yeah. She arrives shortly after and is torn to bits by the boy's All parents. Alright, I am back. Why was that flush so loud? Because I have a fully functioning toilet in my room, so I never have to leave for maximum efficiency. Oh, okay, then why didn't I hear you peeing? Because I pee on silent mode by hitting the side of the bowl like any normal human being, you dickhead. I'm not an animal. Oh my god, man. Alright, anyways. Back to the movie. Her mom blames her friends for being bad influences on her, although this is all May's idea, and May says nothing to defend her friends, as she doesn't want to disappoint her mom and goes home with her mom. Friends are disappointing her in turn, and we speed boost over to the day of the Red Moon and the Fort Town concert, where the girls go to the concert without May, and before the ritual, Cuck Dad goes over and is wise kind dad, giving her some words of wisdom, something along the lines of be yourself or whatever, and they begin the ritual, which requires more stuff, as I said, and here they are. A circle for the bitch to be in, a shaman with a sword to laser beam her forehead. A red wound cause, don't know, China maybe. And singing from the heart. Doesn't have to be Chinese fucking throat music. Could be a Blink-182 song, if you so please. It doesn't really matter. It just has to be from the heart. So they do all that and she gets transported to a bamboo realm where Sanhi, or whatever the main ancestor's name is, is with a mirror to pass through and get rid of the panda. She struggles through a bit, but halfway she like, you know what? I changed my mind. And goes back, poof, elephant toothpaste everywhere. She's a panda. Mom's like, it's okay. We can do it again. Hey, you said you only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Yo, this bitch a liar. Anyway, May wants to keep it and go to the concert and they try to hold her back to no avail. My mom gets mad because her mom's annoying and her kid is annoying and her panda panda breaks because it got cracked and she becomes a panda again. Her panda is massive, like Godzilla massive by the way. So assuming that she went through the same panda phase the same way that her daughter did, even if she didn't, how the fuck did she not manage to kill her entire town or the whole temple or whatever she was in at the time? And how did they keep it under wraps? That was my biggest concern here, but I have a few more questions. Do you have to have the panda pendant on your person at all times? Because that's kind of stupid if it breaks that easily. Also, another question. If the panda is related to your period, and it is your period, then does it die when you stop getting periods like at 40-ish? Actually, I don't care, whatever. May skips and hops and pops and skydives over and into the concert. If you could break in undetected all along that easily, why the fuck was money even a problem, asshole? Also, nobody notices this, which is kind of believable. It's a concert, no one's paying attention. Or maybe, I don't know, whatever. She somehow finds her friends who took care of her Tamagotchi and makes up with them, and then they find out that birthday boy's bitch ass also likes Fort Town, and they vibe with him. And right as they start saying, Mummy Pandazilla arrives, and the whole stadium clears out for a panda 1v1. 
one. May tells her the band only was all her idea, like, I'm changing, mom. This is not a phase, okay? Sorry, I'm not perfect like you. And is instructed by her family to keep her in a massive circle they're making to do the ritual for both of them again before the Red Moon is over. And she employs the elite tactic of twerking to your parents to keep them busy. And for anybody thinking of how mean it was to call a panda hoeing, take a deep, hard look into the scene and really ask yourself, who is the asshole over here? Probably still me, but whatever. Doesn't matter. Then she pops and jumps around her mom some more and headbutts her unconscious out of the circle and tries to drag her back in, but her mama's so fat, she can't. There's no punchline, she's just fat. So her elders all break their pendants and become pandas too and help her drag her mom into the circle. This one wasn't a ruler running, by the way. They drag her in while singing, but it's not loud enough and it's not working. I'm guessing the circle's too big. So her friends somehow managed to get Fort Town to sing. Now, how the fuck did they manage to do that? Unimportant. The heavens open for them and May finds a kid version of her mom in bamboo heaven and she's all like, I'll never be perfect enough for my mom. And May's like, don't worry, you I, kid, mom. Mom, kid, kid, mom, and takes her over to the mirror where the rest of the ladies are. Mom and mom's mom make up. They all pass through the mirror, except me, and the resting bitch face ancestor finally smiles upon her and gives her Eskimo kisses. Whoop de fucking do. They're forever in debt now because they have to pay for the stadium they fucked up, but it's okay because May can go out as a kawaii cat girl. This movie gets 11 senpais out of 5 oni chans.